What is up YouTube? Tim Layton here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. It means a lot. So today I'm going to be going over this Russian-Ukraine-US conflict and why that's affecting our stock market. Full disclosure, it is not the only thing affecting our stock market. If you watch my previous video, you'll see there's a plethora of other reasons. Interest rates, bond yields, inflation, unemployment, blah blah blah, the list goes on. But today, a big reason that the stock market dropped so much today is this Russia-Ukraine conflict. And we're going to break that down. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so a little backstory, a little history lesson on Ukraine in case you don't know what's going on. So Ukraine used to be a part of the Soviet Union, aka Old Russia, until the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. Then Ukraine became its own independent country. Now Russia didn't like that, but they couldn't do anything. The Soviet Union just collapsed. They said, okay, it is what it is. Now along with Russia not liking that, Eastern Ukraine didn't like that either. Eastern Ukraine is the side closest to Russia. They said, yo, Russians are kind of animals. They're badass. I want to be with those guys. I want to be on their team. But Western Ukraine, the side closer to Europe, said, hey, we kind of like these Europe guys. They're kind of sick. And they wanted to become part of the European Union, a part of NATO. They wanted to join the Western world. All right, fast forward 25 years. The year is 2014. We're in Crimea a small peninsula off of Ukraine located in the Black Sea. All these military dudes show up and they say, we take Crimea back. And then all the civilians are like, oh no, the Russians, they're here. They're here to take Ukraine back. And the military dudes go, we not Russian, we nobody. We take Crimea now. And now Crimea makes their own constitution where they say they are officially recognizing themselves as a state of Russia and no longer part of Ukraine. And then the military dudes go, JK, we are Russian. We have Crimea. And that's how that happened. And that wasn't necessarily cool. Nobody else in the world really ever recognized that. Yes, they have a constitution. Yes, they are officially recognizing themselves as part of Russia. However, the rest of the world said, no, that's not how that works. You're still a part of Ukraine. Now, as if Crimea isn't enough, Putin wants all of Ukraine back. He wants to stop them from joining the European Union, from joining NATO, from joining the Western world. He wants Ukraine under his sphere of influence. He wants them. He wants the territory and he wants the population to control. But why does the U.S. care? What's their involvement? And why does the stock market care? So the U.S. in 1994 signed the Budapest Memorandum Security Assurances for Ukraine. That is an agreement with the U.S., the U.K., and Russia that said Ukraine is going to be totally safe as an independent country. Russia will not try and do anything to take them back. Now, as Russia potentially violates this agreement, and they already did with Crimea, the U.S. is going to have to step in. They are obligated by this agreement to do something about it. But why does the stock market care? So, simply put, the stock market just doesn't want a war. And as we inch closer and closer and closer to a war, the stock market's going to drop more and more and more. And I think that's kind of odd because historically, the U.S. has done very well in times of war. The U.S. is very good at profiting off a of war. However, the U.S., the stock market at least, does not want to go to war. And it's going to drop as long as they think we're going to go to war. Now, here's the bad part in my eyes. It's kind of a lose-lose situation. Not necessarily a lose-lose, but more like a lose-don't-win situation. So let's say we go to war. Let's say Putin invades Ukraine. They go in. We send troops to Ukraine. We go in. We start fighting. The stock market is going to crash. It's going to keep dropping and dropping. Now, on the flip side, let's say Biden's able to talk Putin down. They have a little talk, a little discussion, and Putin goes, okay, we're not invading Ukraine. You got us. You called our bluff. We're not doing it. I promise. Well, Putin's kind of a flaky dude. He's kind of a snake. So the stock market's not going to skyrocket because Putin promises he's not going to invade Ukraine. Nobody's going to believe him. The stock will probably stop crashing, but they're not going to skyrocket. And that's why it's a lose if he invades Ukraine, 
but also a don't win if he doesn't invade Ukraine, because that tension is still going to be there. Our stocks aren't going to skyrocket. Nobody's going to believe him. And it's kind of a crappy situation to be in. All right, guys. So that is going to be about it for this video. I just wanted to give you the lowdown on the Ukraine-Russia situation. And like I said, I do foresee the stock market to continue dropping because of this if it continues to escalate. However, if it starts de-escalating, I don't foresee the stock market to come up because of it. It will just stop dropping more than likely. So thank you guys for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment anything you want to see from my channel and anything you think I can do better because I'm trying to help you guys out here. Stay tuned for tomorrow where I will be going over a list of stocks that I think have gotten especially beaten up over the last two weeks and I think are way undervalued and it would be a good time to buy the dip on. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow.